Hello, my name is Sabra, and I'm thankful that you have tuned in today's video break. And you know, having a correct view of ownership will set us free from those deadly things like greed. You know, have you ever had to deal with greed? And in Psalm 24, 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. You know, that is a face-to-face -face truth with saying, Okay, the earth really belongs to the Lord. And everything in it is his as well. But isn't it interesting how fast as Americans, or maybe not you, but as Americans, we want to consume. We have a consumer mentality we have to have. And the, you know, the more we have, the more we think we have to have. And, but have you ever noticed this? That once you have it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it means as much as when you didn't have it. You know, and I don't know what it is. It's a kind of a consumer mentality thing that says, wants to pour into our lives that you need, that you need to have this. But here's what's interesting about that. God is the one that truly owns it all. Now, this kind of blows my mind in a little ways because there's this growing dissatisfaction sometimes in the world that we live in if we don't have what our neighbor has. You know, if we don't have a big bank account, if we don't have the right title on our doorway, you know, if, if we don't have the nicest car or the biggest home or the most toys, there's something about this growing dissatisfaction that can kind of grow in our heart. But once we, like I just said a little while ago, once we have those, we really don't, we really don't want them anymore. But what's interesting about that, yes, we may have the title to our home and someday we may actually own it, but not really because we never get to really own what's already not ours to own this. And if we have that perspective, it, we lose, it, it doesn't have its hold on us. It's no longer owning us that, okay, yeah, we may have the title to our car, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to make it into eternity. You know, we may be temporary owners. But we're not going to, it's not ours. It belongs to the Lord. Wouldn't that be an interesting if we had that perspective? Because then I don't think we, why would we want to be greedy? Because we, it didn't really, it isn't really ours anyway. And some people really got this down. You know, I've had some friends, I have some family members that really have this down. That yes, they have a home, but it really doesn't belong to them. It's the Lord's. And so whatever God wants to do with it, they've done some marvelous things with it. And so I'm thinking, what is it that God wants? And it's funny that I say that because he already has it anyway. What is it that's got its hold and grip on you so tightly that God is saying, let loose, let it go. Because when we, when possessions can begin to own us to the place that we become, we, they, they own us and they determine what we're going to do and how we're going to do it and when we're going to do it. It's odd, but just watch your schedule, you know, and, but if God, if we understand it from God's perspective, then we understand, okay, I'm just a steward then of the possessions that I've been given. And so God, how can I use these things that you have given to me to further your kingdom here? Who can I share them with? One time I had this silly ceramic cat. I, I know it sounds really weird and I loved it. But somebody came over to my house and said, man, I really like that cat. And I thought, okay, God, is this going to bless them? This doesn't really belong to me. It's not going to make the journey. It's not going to make the trip. I should just give it to them. And man, it blesses people when you do that. Because it seems like, okay, God cared about me enough. Not Sabra, but God cared about me enough. So make sure that your possessions aren't holding you to the place that you've become like greedy. Have a blessed day.